Hey, what's going on, everybody? <clears throat> uh, shout out to y'all, man. Hope y'all having a good day. Um, right now, <clears throat> the weather is kind of gloomy outside. Um, clouds looking all gray. Look like it's gonna rain. Look like it's been raining a little bit. Be honest, man. I <clears throat> I like the weather like this. You know what I'm saying? I guess I'm different. You know, I like it like this, where the sun ain't out, it ain't hot, it ain't too cold, just a little windy, but I like when the sky is, you know, looking the way it's looking. <clears throat> Me, personally, I do, because it, uh, it's kind of, um, it, it, it's calming to me. It's like soothing, it's calming, it, it's, it, it put me in a real relaxing state, but, uh, <clears throat> Today, man, it, um, something been on my mind, and um, the reason why something been on my mind, uh, well, this particular thing has been on my mind is because I had a dream about this last night. Um, and I've been up since seven this morning, you know. Um, but what I dreamed about last night, uh was basically um something that had happened to me a while back a while ago and um basically like I dreamed um something that I manifested and it started making me thinking about the time I met the prophet so <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this little story here hope I don't be too long man but um uh, I want to talk about my gifts. One of my one of my spiritual gifts. One of them is called manifestation. Now, a few years ago, man, I didn't know what this was. I never heard of this until I met this prophet. And uh this happened a few years back. So to break it all the way down. <clears throat> this uh, a few years ago, you know, I was at a very dark place in my life, in my mind, really in my mind, uh, in my spirit. And I was battling in my mind because I was going through some things and I was under all type of depression, severe depression, you know, uh, <clears throat> is is very real, which is like caused me to write about the songs that I choose to write about or rap about whatever even if it even if don't nobody ever hear him i don't care like it is i don't care who it reach and who it don't reach right now stories of what i went through or what i felt what i thought like i turned my thoughts into rhymes of what i you know pain that i felt or things that happened whether it was good or bad and and that's that's kind of like a stress reliever in a way so i don't care you know if, if it you know what what happens to it but at this point <clears throat> i was so depressed that i don't want to live anymore this this uh this is how my mind state was a few years back i didn't want to live i didn't care to live like i really just didn't care to live i i would tell myself that uh this back when i was like taking nyquil every day you know what i'm saying like just wanting to sleep and stay asleep you know uh I would just go to work, come home, take NyQuil. If I wake up, I take NyQuil again. If I wake up, I take it again. You know what I'm saying? And until it'll be time for me to go to work. And um, <clears throat> I used to always have this mindset like, man, if it kills me, if it kills me, it kills me. You know, I just didn't want to live. I felt like I had nothing to live for. I felt I was cursed. You know, I felt like I, there's no purpose for me. I, I didn't know why I was always struggling. You know, what is what is the point? It, it just seemed like everything in my life was just failing. So I go to this, uh, <laughs> I wake up in the morning, you know, on my way to work. And I looked and I saw I was out of, out of NyQuil. And I was like, man, I'm out. That's just how much I was taking. And I was like, man, I'm out of NyQuil. So I'm like, man, you know what? When I get out of work, I'm going to stop at Family Dollar. I'm going to go get me some more. Because my mindset was, as soon as I get home, I'm going to sleep. And people at work, 
You know, they was, you know, I wasn't talking to nobody at work. I wasn't talking to nobody on the phone. I was just to myself and I could see like people, they, they eyes, you know, and I could see it in their eyes. They're like, what, what's wrong, bro? Like, like what's going on? And supervisor would ask me what's wrong. I just wasn't talking. I was sitting with myself, everything. And, uh, so when I get off work, I'm get, I get out work at two in the afternoon. I get out work. I go to the family dollar. I go to the family dollar and I'm getting out the car and, and I'm grabbing my keys Right now, as I'm grabbing my keys, I see a dude pull, pull like, uh, he's driving down the street, and he's looking at me, like, like, give him this look, like, you know what I'm saying? Now, this is the prophet. I didn't know this at the time yet, but I don't know who this was yet. So, I'm looking at this dude, like, man, what's this dude looking at? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is he looking at me or whatever? And uh, that distracted me. And what happened is my keys end up slipping and they fell in my car and I closed the door, not knowing that I locked my keys in the car. I go in the family dollar, buy two bottles of NyQuil, I come out, and as I come out, I go to my car, I'm like, oh man, please don't tell me. I'm pulling on my door, I look through the window, I'm like, man, I didn't lock my keys in the car. So I, I'm by this point, I'm like pissed. I'm so frustrated because I'm like, it just seemed like stupid stuff is always happening to me, man. And so I go to the back. I go to the let me tell you how let me tell you how depressed I was. I just call I, like I call my mom, I tell her, hey man, I locked my keys in the car. Do you still got my spare keys? She like, Yeah, yeah, where you at? And I'm like, Oh, I'm at this family dollar, you know, on this side of town. She like, Okay, I'll be there. And I just I'm just so pissed off. I I go to the back of the family dollar and just be, just sit on one of the generators like, oh man, I'm just it's just like nothing goes right. All of a sudden, I see the dude, he pulls up in the parking lot. And I see him get out the car. This is the prophet. So, and he's, he's get out the car and he's walking up to the family dollar, but he's doing this, like looking, like looking in the back. I'm like, oh, there this dude go. I'm like, please don't let this dude say nothing to me. He go on the family dollar. He come back out. As he come back out, he like, yo, man, you look, uh, he goes in the back of the family dollar. I'm like, I knew this dude was going to kind of say something to me, man. Cause I, I, be honest, like, I don't like, I ain't going to say I don't like, I kind of got this. When I see random people approaching me, I kind of got like this, like, like, you know, like, like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what you, cause you know, you never know what people, you never know what people intentions are. You know what I'm saying? It's too much craziness and wickedness going on in this world. So you just never know like what people motives are. So that's how I was. So I'm looking at this dude like, man, who, like, 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 man, what, you know, who is this dude coming? So he comes to the back that a family dollar where I'm sitting there. He's like, yo. You looking for a job? I said, nah, man, I already got a job. He's like, oh, I'm just trying to say, cause it's a, it's a, it's a warehouse down the street. They hiring, man. They looking for people. I'm like, man, I, I got a job. I said, I don't even like jobs anyway, but I got a job. So he's like, okay, okay, okay. And he's about to leave. All of a sudden he turned back around. He like, I see you. You thinking in your mind, who is this dude? Why is the dude coming up to me? I don't want to be bothered. Like, you don't understand, like, 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 he say, you, you in a real dark place right now, man. And you say, you want to know why you in this dark place? One of the reasons is you're living a life that you're not supposed to be living. This ain't your life. You got this talent. Yeah, I see your gifts, and not and then and now now I'm like, okay, he got my attention because I'm like I, I never met this dude before, never seen him before, and I'm just like, how you know this stuff about me? Because I'm like, what he's saying, what he what he was saying, it wasn't it wasn't a lie. So I'm like, like, how do you know this stuff about me? He was like, oh yeah, I, he said, I know more. Th I know I know more. I know quite a few. Say so I I I seen you before already. But not in this dimension. He was like, I already seen you. He said, as a matter of fact, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I knew we was going to meet today. He said, I already knew it. Last night, I heard the voice. You're going to meet him tomorrow. He said, I already knew it. And I knew who you, and he said, I know who you is, man. Like he said, you don't know who you is, but I know who you is. 
I know who you was really meant to be. And he was like, see, he was like, you, you got a lot of gifts in you, man. You got a lot of gifts. And you got work to do. He said, the thing is, what did, what did he tell me, man? Because cause I was like, oh, yeah, he was like, you go to church? And I said, no, not no more, I don't. And he was like, yeah, he was like, uh, yeah, I know that church. I know that church that you used to go to. You grew up in that church. You grew up in a church all your life. Your mama grew up in that church. And he didn't name the, the, the name of the church, but he named what street it was on. I was like, my mouth dropped because I was like, now I'm like, okay, like, 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 what is this? Like, like, what is this? So, and he was telling me like, yeah, man, you got all these gifts. You got, you got gifts in you, man. And you got, and you got a, uh, he was like, you got, you got a, a potential that you want to pursue or that you were supposed to pursue, but it never worked out and you gave up. He said, you know, like how you was on stage all the time doing Michael Jackson. And I was like, oh, man, because I, I I do. I ain't been doing a lot of Michael Jackson lately, but a few years back when my pops, man, we was on my pop show, man. That's all I did was Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson. Matter of fact, probably after this video, man, I'm probably going to upload. Uh, dang, I don't even think I got it anymore. I'm going to see if I got this video that I was doing Michael Jackson Smooth Criminal. If I don't, y'all probably have to scroll all the way down my YouTube my YouTube channel and watch the video. It's one of the first videos I uploaded. I want to try to upload it again, but I probably don't got the video. That's probably was in my old phone. But um, yeah, anyway, so this is what he do, right? He gave me his card. And he was like, call me, man. You know, he said, we got a lot to talk about. It's a lot of things I need to talk to you about. He said, you got some questions. Not only that you got some questions, you greater than what you think you are. And he was like, do you even know who you are? And I said, yeah, I'm nothing. Because that's what I felt. And he was like, yeah, you are nothing right now. Cause you don't understand what you've been doing all this time. But I'm a, I'm a, he said, I'm gonna wake you up. I'm gonna show you. So he gave me, you know what I'm saying, his card. And when I looked at the card, he had his cell phone number on there and his name. And it said, Prophet. I'm not going to say his, uh, I'm not going to say his whole name because I don't, you know how people are, you know, you don't know if they want, some people don't want they. But it said prophet such and such, his name, you know what I'm saying? I, and, and I, and that's what made me think. I was like, okay, who is this dude? You know what I'm saying? Right after he drove off, then my mama pulled up to give me my spell key. And the timing was so perfect because he really stayed out there talking, talking with me for about an hour. And the whole time I'm like, where's my mama? You know what I'm saying? She like, she ain't really far, you know, to give me my spell key. But it's like, whatever it was, it just had to be time. Just that perfect. Because as he driving out the parking lot, my mom's pulling up in the parking lot. And I was like, man, that's right on time. But it's almost like something was like, I had to allow this dude to meet you, to say just enough, and for you to receive his phone number so he can school you on some things. Now, when he pulled up, I told my mom, I mean, when my mama pulled up, I'm telling her everything that just happened. And my mama kind of looking like, how this dude know all this stuff about you? Is this somebody you know? I said, I don't know this dude. I said, matter of fact, this dude like a few years older than me. Um, Because at this time when this happened, I was 26. And he probably was like 43 at the time. So he's, yeah. So I'm like, man, I, ain't, I never saw this dude before in my life. Never met this dude before in my life. And I say, look, mama, look what he gave me. And I showed her the card. And she looked at the card. She say, oh, he's a prophet. And I say, yeah, he was telling me, like, he got a lot of stuff he got to tell me. He was like, man, and I got work to do and all this kind of stuff. And she was like, oh, you know, maybe give him a call, son. You know, maybe, you know, she said, I know you've been down and out lately. Maybe this is a sign. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So I give him a call. 
go over to his house and uh yeah I, I give him a call and I go over to his house and we talking and uh he basically was telling me like me meeting you we sitting in this living room we talking it's me and him he bas and he basically broke it down like how me and you meeting was no accident I had to meet you you saying especially with the way you was going because you really was at the verge and on the point of giving up on who you are, what you really was meant to be, your destiny. You know what I'm saying? You you just threw in a towel. And I did. I did. I, I just threw in a towel. So he basically was like, but you 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 don't have a clue like why you here. Let me tell you, he was like you got these talents. You know how to. They say, I say, I see you, man. You you know how to write a song. You you know how to dance. You know how to draw. You know how to. You be doing all these different things. He say, but one thing you never knew was your spiritual gifts. And I'm like, spiritual gifts, like like all this stuff is was was new to me. So I'm like, I mean, I heard it around the way, but not the way he broke it down. So I'm like, spiritual gifts. And he was basically like, yeah, one of your spiritual gifts is the gift of awareness. And that kind of means like sometimes you feel, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you could, it was like sometimes you could shake a person's hand. You would look dead in their eyes, no good. Or sometimes you could, you could build, you could meet a person and just something about them that makes you want to be around them. Um, and, and and now I kind of started looking back at people that I knew and it was true. Like even like certain people, I could be in a room with them and I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm just, I, I just want to leave. I'm, I, 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 I are like, I could be sitting somewhere that I, that I want to be like, man, I'm glad I'm here. Like, Hey man, you know, hey, this is a nice place, whatever. And then somebody will come sit around me and, and all of a sudden I just don't even feel good. I don't even feel good no more. Like I, I'm just like, I'm saying this in my mind, like, man, I was, I was this person get away from me, man, like for real. Oh, I'm about, I'm about to get away, and I will. If the person won't leave, I just, I get up and leave. I can, I, I can go over somebody's house and be like, I don't, I don't feel right in here. I can go over somebody's house and be like, man, I just love the vibe in here. It, it was just, I, but it been like that though, and it was just always, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Then he broke it down with this one here. He said, another one of your gifts, which is your main spiritual gift. This is your main spiritual gift right here. Your number one. Now, I had my partner over there, too. One of my partners. Because my I told my partner about this prophet. And he was like, I want to meet him. He looked at my homeboy at first before he got to me. He said, you, your spiritual gift. One of your, He said, one of your spiritual gifts. Your spiritual gift is the gift of protection. Meaning like you are protect over people who can't protect themselves, I guess mentally or, or whatever, you know, or probably just all around. And my partner was kind of like, man, I kind of always have been like that, but I don't know why. I don't know how, because he was like, I feel like I can't even protect my own mind. And I, and I guess that's why the prophet was trying to tell him, because you feel that way by yourself is why you are always willing to protect others. Whatever that, whatever that may be. Then he looked at me and he was like, KJ, your thing, your thing and your gift, your main gift is the gift of manifestation, meaning whatever you speak on is going to happen. He said, but see, you never really learned that all your life. So all this time you just been speaking, not realizing that you was creating as you were speaking. Now I'm sitting here listening to this, right? And the whole time I'm listening to this, I'm like, nah, 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 that can't be. And he was like, yeah, yeah, it's real. He said, for example, what's wrong with your, he said, what's wrong with your leg? What's wrong with your right leg right now? And I was like, man, I just got all this pain in it. And he was like, where did pain come from? What, 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 you hurt yourself? I say, I don't know, man. I, I, I think I did. He said, oh, you think you did? You think you hurt yourself? I say, well, I know I'll be doing a lot of dancing. I say, maybe I, maybe I tore a muscle or something. And he was like, 
And I was like, what's funny? It was like, if you tore a muscle. Point, he said, point to me in your leg where you say you tore the muscle at. So I pointed to him like my lower leg muscle, like under my calf. He was like, if you tore that muscle right there, do you really think you'll be walking? And if you are able to walk, do you really think you'll be able to walk the way you are now? And I was like, man, I don't know. Maybe I tore just a little bit. Maybe I tore just a little bit. He was like, the whole time. He said, man, ever since you came in my house, the whole time I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing my leg hurt. My leg, my leg, my leg. And when you're not around me, he said, I'm, I'm seeing you speaking it. You speaking it to your mama? I was. He said, you speaking it to your brother? I was. He said, you speaking it to your dad? You speaking it to him? Pointing to my homeboy sitting on the side. I'm like, how did this dude know this bit? But what it was, he was prophesying. He was seeing it. Like prophets, like they scary to talk to. To me, they are. But when you find you, if you find you a real one, it's good to talk to him. Especially if you lost. So I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And he was like, that's why that pain is there. Ain't nothing wrong with your leg, KJ. That's what he was telling me. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with your leg. But let me tell you what you were doing. You know why that pain in your leg? Because you manifested it. You are creating it. That's nothing wrong with your leg. But you are manifesting it. He said, now, if you keep doing that, it's really something... You're going to really manifest something for real because you got to give. So I was like, I don't understand, man, but I don't get it. He said, I'm going to break it down to you. The enemy. The enemy know you got this gift, right? He said, so the enemy, he is trying to put wrong things in your mind to make it match up with your words. He said, for example, he said, with your words and your mind. You're going to manifest these things. So the enemy know you got this guilt. He says, so the enemy is trying to put wrong things or worst case scenarios in your mind to make it match up with your words. Or even if you don't speak it, he's just trying to put it in your mind. Just throw it out there. You think it, think it, think it. Because he know, he said, this, this is your guilt, KJ, your imagination. Your imagination is your faith. He say, so if you want to know, well, what is my faith? What do I believe in? He say, what you believe in is your man. He say, with your faith, what you believe in is your imagination. That's your faith. Your faith is just what you meditate on. Your faith is just what you imagine over and over and over and over. He's saying, I'm telling you that is because whatever you keep imagining over and over, that is what's becoming real. That's what he would tell me. Whatever you speaking over and over, that is what's becoming real. So if he putting in your mind, hey, you know you got pain in your leg, you know you got pain, and, and you thinking this, you, you know you got, you know something wrong with your leg, yeah, something wrong, something wrong, something wrong. That's why he said, you ever notice that that pain is getting worse? The more you keep thinking that, and the more you keep speaking that, he said, you know that pain is getting worse in your leg. It's getting worse, ain't it? First it started in your. Muscle under your calf. Then it spread it to your calf. He said, now I spread it to your knee. Now it's going in your thigh. Now you, now, now your whole right leg is hurting. He said, I'll tell you what. I'll do you one better. Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor and get an MRI on your leg. And see what the, see what the doctor said. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. He was like, no, go ahead, go. Go on, go. He said, I'm going to show you something. Go ahead and go. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. I go to the doctor. I get an MRI. MRI is when they lay you down in this machine and you got your whole body going down and they scan you or whatever. So they scan my leg. After that, the whole time I'm nervous, I'm like, oh, man, they go, oh, it's gone. Oh, man, it's gone. Oh, man. So I went back to the prophet. I told him, yeah, I went and got the MRI. And he was like, what they say? I say, man, they say they got to wait till the results come in. Probably take a week or two. I said, but oh, man, I'm war. Oh, man. I, oh, man. All right. He said, nah, it's going to be all right. He said, I don't know what you're tripping for, man. I'm, he said, yeah, I know the pain is still there. He said, but your healing is right around the corner. I know that pain. He said, you might feel that pain, but nothing is wrong. That pain going to go away. When you get the truth, that pain going to go away. 
The only reason why he said the only reason why the pain is there is because there's a spiritual war that's there. And the enemy is it's like you back and forth. The enemy, the enemy can't create like God. You know what I'm saying? Only God got like this creative power, and we also got it too. And he was like, You got it, you got it real hard. So I'm telling him, what is the gift of manifestation? Like, what is like what what, what is what is this, man? Like, do everybody got this? And he was like, Well, life and they say life and death is in the power of the tongue. He said, Everybody, everybody kind of manifests to a certain degree. He say, but it's when you withhold the gift of manifestation that you have a far more, even greater power than others. Like, like on a high, more on a higher standard, he say, because that is a specific gift that God wanted you to have on purpose. He don't do that with everybody. And I would tell him, well, why would God want me to have this gift? Like, I don't get it. He say, well, I'm going to tell you why. One of the reasons is because for so long, your family have never achieved. They never succeeded. And it's mostly been failure or negativity than anything. For so long, the family has talked about generational curses. And they just believed in it, you know, and they just feel like they don't know what to do to break it. If God put a gift of manifestation in you, which means what I speak and what I think is going to happen. That's why you are the light, because if what you with this certain gift that God wants you to have, this is what he's telling me with the certain gift that God wants you to have the gift of manifestation. If you keep speaking and thinking. I break the curse or I'm not cursed or whatever failed my family won't fail me. And, and God put this particular gift in your own purpose. Just imagine the world you're going to create. He say, see, that's what it is. God saw for so long what's been going on in your ancestral line, your bloodline, your family line, your great grandparents, your grandparents, your forefathers, your parents, your ancestors, all that he saw what's been going on for so long. So it's almost like he said, when I bring you here, well, actually, you know, I was brought, you know, you, you know, you brought here by accident because the way your parents brought you here. But he, had, but he put this gift in you, this particular gift in you. Not only because he say, think about it. Why would God of all of, of all people through the bloodline, he put this this particular gift in you and you the one who got out his talent. You the one who different. You the one who different. You the one who got out his talent. You the one who could act out these different characters ever since you was a kid. You the one not to draw. You the one who this. You the one who that. You the one who that. You the one who that. And you got the gift of manifestation. He was like, it's a, that, that, it's a reason for that. He said, see, you don't know who you are. You a king. So the results came back from the doctor. Kid, you're not a doctor. Call my phone. Yeah, uh, man, I speak to Mr. Mims. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, oh my God, they about to tell me. They about to tell me. Man, he was like, uh, yeah, I just want to let you know uh, your results came back for your MRI and everything is normal. You it, it, Ain't nothing wrong. I'm on the phone. Nah, nah, that can't be true. I still see, still don't want to believe it. I, that's us though. Don't we do that? When it's in our face, we still, nah, nah, you know what I'm saying? And I was one of them people. I was one of them people like that with every, with damn near anything though. No, 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 no. But I, I had to, I had to change that because I saw that that is what was destroying. It was destroying me and it was filling me. Went back to the prophet and I showed, I showed him my results and he read it and he was like, what did I tell you? He said, I already saw it. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with you, man. Wasn't nothing wrong with you in the beginning. And I was like, but. But the pain, but the pain, you say, yeah, it's like, cause you still talking about it. He say, go to another doctor, go to another doctor and get another MRI. Go to a whole nother doctor on a whole nother side of town. I did it. Laid in another MRI machine. Results came back. Everything is fine. Nothing is wrong with your leg. And this is what he told me. He's the prophet. He say, after he read my second result from the second hospital, whatever, he say, once again, you're fine. He say, start 
it's even, even though I know it's going to be hard, but start training your mind to do this. Nothing is wrong with my leg. My leg feels fine. There is no pain. Train your mind to think that on a daily basis and train your voice, your tongue to say that on a daily basis. And I kid you not, in two weeks, man, that pain went away. My That pain went away. I ain't had no problems in my right leg since. I be dancing now, I'm, you know, you know, power walking, all that kind of stuff. I ain't had no pain since. And he was like, you see what I'm saying? He said that he said that's that's what I keep trying to tell you, KJ. You keep trying to put in your mind that everything is wrong. And, and this is why things have happened. He said, remember, man, you got the gift of manifestation. He said the devil knows that. So there's things that you that's things that you could have. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling what where you could have been had you been on your job. And I told him, I said, well, what about all the positive stuff I said? What about that? Why ain't why ain't really seen them things? He said, well, when you look back at your life, man, you spoke you spoke over your life and thought over your life more negative than anything. Am I right or am I right? Mainly that's what you have spoken. Mainly that's what you have thought. Mainly that's what you put your faith into. Mainly that's what you have meditated on. Uh, negative this. I don't have no money. I'm cursed. This and this. I, I, I never can't do this. I never can't do that. Man, why does always happen? I'm trying to pray, but God ain't, God ain't doing nothing, man. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? It's just negative everywhere you go. Manifestation of this gift that you got, you attracting this stuff on a higher level than other people. I thought about something and, and he kind of told me like, look back at your, um, look back at the things in your life that have manifested as a kid from an adult. So I'm going to tell y'all a few stories. I'm going to try to keep them short as possible, even though I know this video. Yeah, whatever. But hey, real, I'm going to be honest with you though. Real life stories, they're not short. They're going to be long. Even if you try to, because really I could say a whole lot more that happened, but I'm going to try to, you know, sum it up. Okay. I remember one time, now this prophet said I was born with this gift of manifestation. You just, he said, I, you just never knew it, especially as a child. Kids don't know, but he say, if you look back at the things you imagined and spoke, especially growing up as a kid, you cannot sit up here and tell me that you didn't see results of this stuff. I remember one time when I was five years old, I, I'm an animal lover. I love our animals, dog, cats, monkeys, gorillas, tigers, lions, tigers, and bears. I don't care. I love our animals. I don't like, I, I'm, I don't, the only thing I don't like is, is rats. I hate rats. I hate cockroaches. Rats, cockroaches, and spiders. I ain't scared of them. I just don't like them because they, I feel like, like they annoying. You know what I'm saying? They, it's like, why are you here? You annoying. It's like that. But I love our animals. So, one Christmas morning, because I love animals so much, one Christmas morning, my mama bought um, me and my little sister some stuffed animal baby cats. She had a black and white girl cat, ba baby girl cat stuffed animal for my little sister, and a black and a gray and white boy baby cat for me. And they were stuffed animals. But they looked so real. And, and when you pick them up, it was a it was a button inside that make them perk. And they looked it real. And I remember my little sister like, oh, this is so cute. I just wish they was real. I just wish they were real. But my mama couldn't afford, like, no, no pets. And we really wanted that for Christmas. Like, we really wanted, like, a real, we, want, we wanted to wake up Christmas morning to a real pet. But my mama couldn't afford it at the time. We grew, we grew up not really having much. So that's, that was the best she could do. Take these stuffed animals, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and make them real. You know, she would say that. And this is what I would do. I would take both of them and I would hold them in my arms or I have them on the couch and I'd just be petting them and I'd put in my mind, I would say this in my mind like they are real. This is real. Both, both of them are real. And I put like little bowls of water down there, just, just, just making it, just making it feel real as possible. And, you know, kids already got big ima imagination. My imagination big? Nah. But the prophet was like, your imagination is part of your gift of manifestation, which is part of your words. 
when you speak, that's your imagination come out. And he would tell me, like, your imagination is creating that. It might not happen overnight. He said, that's magic. You don't fall out of the sky. Man, it don't work like that. That's, you know what I'm saying? He was like, it ain't like that. But in time, there's a series of events that's happening. Every, whatever you say, if you keep saying it over and over and over, he was telling me, dog, I'm telling you, that thing going to materialize. It's like building a house. Until the house is built, you're like, hey, I, hey, I made that house. Yeah, they say it's kind of like that. So the whole time, I'm like, these cats, these baby cats are real. Black and white baby girl cat, gray and white baby boy cat. They real. I will hold them. They real. Put in my mind. They real. They real. I will say it. They real. Like they real to me. And I kid you not. In six months, my mama get my mama get a phone call. I forgot how it really how it really happened, but she get a phone call from this dude, and he was like, "Yeah, he was looking for a baby cat," and she was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, for for my uh for my 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 kids, my son and my daughter." And he was like, "Oh, but you come over here, you know, I got a whole bunch of baby cats, man, you know, blah blah blah." I don't know if she was looking in the green sheet or what, but she go over there. To this man's house, and we go with her, and kid you not, the man brings a little baby boy cat out, and the cat was gray and white. And in my mind, I'm already like, that's crazy. So, we about to drive off, and... He's like, hey, 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 y'all want y'all want another one? Sorry about that, y'all phone ringing. But uh, he's like, hey, y'all, y'all want to, uh, you y'all want another one? And my mom like, I don't really got the money. He's like, I'll give it to you for free. I'm trying, I'm just trying to get rid of these cats. Hold on, I'll be right back. I, I'm let me go get one. And he went in the house. Man I had about like ten cats went in the house and randomly picked this cat, and there was a black and white. Baby girl cat took it home, and then it hit us. My mom was like, "Dang, that looked just like the cats that I got taught for Christmas six months ago. Them stuffed animals. It looked just like them. The real cat, the real baby boy cat, gray and white, blue eyes. The stuffed animal cat, black and white, blue eyes. The baby girl cat, the real one, yellow. I mean, uh, white and black with yellow eyes. The stuffed animal." Baby girl cat. Black and white with yellow eyes. My mama at the time, she was like, that is so weird. Like, she was like, that's weird how that happened. The whole time I'm staring like, dang, did I do that? Like, wow, that's, that's kind of crazy. Man, it was crazy. Another story. It was one time, man, I was sitting in my living room and I was so bored. And I was listening to old school, old school music or whatever. So I was so bored. I said, man, I'm about to pull up a drink. So I pulled up some cranberry vodka. And I put it on Temptations, Beauties on the Skin Deep. And I had it blasting over my house. And I was listening to this guy named Justin Perry. And he was talking about, you know, when you got the gift of manifestation and all this kind of stuff. And so I did something just, just playing around. I grabbed a air freshener bottle with my cranberry and vodka in my hand and I'm acting as though I'm in my living room and I'm acting as though I'm singing the temptations beauty on the skin deep with my pops. And we singing this song together and we on stage and we got our family and friends, you know what I'm saying? And they looking at us and they like, y'all go ahead, y'all go. I'm, I'm just imagining this, you know what I'm saying? I'm acting it out. And I'm acting as though I'm passing the, the microphone, which is an air freshener bottle. I'm acting like I'm passing it to, <clears throat> to my pops and let him sing a verse. I sing a verse, you sing a verse. I sing a verse, you sing a verse. <clears throat> I sat down on the couch when the song go off. And I was like, <laughs> that would be a trip if that was to happen, though. And uh, that was in October, the month of October. A month later, it's my sister's birthday. She say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing a birthday party. At uh, this karaoke bar. We go there. And I kid you not. I get on the stage. 
my aunt controlling the karaoke DJ, she plays Beauty on a Skin Deep. And it just so happened that the waitress comes up to me and say, here, take, you, you want to drink? It's on the house. Take a cranberry and vodka. The same drink. And I'm on the stage, this song playing, I'm singing on the microphone as though I was acting as though I had an air freshener bottle. And all of a sudden, while I start singing the song, my dad comes out of nowhere. He get on the stage with a glass of wine and we sharing, we sing it back and forth. I do a verse. I pass the mic. I do, I do a verse. He do a verse. I do a verse. And we get off the stage and, and, and my, and guess what? In the, in the crowd, my, it was family and friends. And they like, y'all go ahead, oh y'all go ahead. And I get off stage and I said, I said, nah, that nah, man, nah. That's too weird. That's just too weird. Everything that I put in my mind or I acted out in imagination, it happened. Just the same exact way. With the same drink, the same song, the same spot, the same uh stage, the same people, the same it was, it was, it was freaky. Another story. I tried this, right? I said, man, if that happened, I'm gonna try this. Now I'm playing with it, see? Because I'm because it started coming to me like the, the memory of what the prophet was saying. You got the gift, KJ, you got the gift of manifestation. You what these things that you're doing. In your imagination and with your words, you, you create in reality, man. You create as you go and blah, blah. I said, I'm, I'm going to try this because I'm still really not believing that. But that probably is the enemy trying to make me not believe it. So I said, I'm going to try this right here. So this is what I did. Now it's like last year, year before last. I say year before last. I'm in the middle of my living room. I got a broomstick in my hand. I got my Bluetooth on. And I'm playing, I got everything for Christmas by the Temptations. Beautiful song too, man. Y'all need to hear that song. But I'm playing this song with a broomstick in my hand. And I'm acting as though this is a mic stand. And me and my little sister are singing this song. And one of our family members' house. And we singing this song together. Because we having a Christmas-like karaoke contest or just, you know, sing along or whatever. Now I'm saying this out loud and I'm speaking it right. And I'm and I'm in a I'm in a, in the middle of my living room in my place, but I'm closing my eyes and I'm just I'm just imagining that this is real. And I say, wherever we at, we at one of our family members' house. Not no apartment, it's a house. And I and I wanted to be specific in a way because I just I just wanted to test it. And this was in November. Of like 2000, maybe 18, 19, whatever. And I kid you not. In December, on Christmas Day, my aunt, my aunts, they decide, hey, let's do a, uh, we, and we had somebody at one of my family members' house. And they decide, hey, y'all, we're going to do a Christmas sing-along karaoke, blah, 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 sing our favorite Christmas songs and blah, blah, blah. And my sister come running up to me. KJ, you want to sing a song with me? And I'm like, nah, 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 man. She's like, come on, man. Come on, come on. So I'm like, all right, all right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and uh, I say, what song should we do? She like, oh, let's do let's do the Temptations. I got everything for Christmas. Now I'm going, now my mind, I'm like, nah, man. Nah. And my, I'm saying it to myself like, nah, this can't be. This can't be. So in my imagination, when I was acting it out in my own place, I acted as though I'm going to start off singing the first verse. My sister's like, yeah, you do the first verse. Now, this in real life. And I'm like, dog, everything is happening the way. I'm like, man, this, this is crazy, man. I say, now, nah, you know what? I don't believe it. I don't got no mic stand. When I was using my imagination, I was using my broomstick. And I was like, this is a mic stand right here. This is this is this gonna be a real mic stand. So I'm like, I ain't got no mic stand. No nobody got no mic stand here. So my ain't like, okay, come on, KJ, cost y'all, come on. It's y'all turn sing y'all Christmas song, what y'all wanna sing. So my sister, she like, all right, uh, now nah, you know what? Hold up, hold up. I let uh, hold up, I'm gonna make this real. She I kid you not, she go outside in her car, 
open her back door and pull out a real mic stand with a real microphone. I'm not playing. When I saw her walk through the door with this, I was like, oh, man. And I said, man, where, where you get this? Why, what you doing with this? And she was telling me, oh, you know, dad did a, a Christmas show uh, last week or whatever. And he went, and when he was putting down his, tearing down his music equipment, he put his mic stand in my car. And I told him, I said, yo, dad, you left your mic stand in my car. And he was, and daddy say, man, I get it later. I, I get it after Christmas. Don't worry about it. Just go and leave it in your car next time I see you. Right then and now, I was like, you know what? I'm saying this to myself. I say, that's crazy. It's almost like something in the universe had to make sure that my pops forget his mic stand and my sister car because it's like whatever it was knew what I was manifesting and it had to make it come true. Right then and now, I said, it's, it's something up, man. Maybe the prophet was right. Maybe I do really have a gift to make things happen. Because that's what he was telling me. Like, KJ, you got a gift to make things happen. You just never really mastered it. You never really put no real feeling into it. He said you never really pursued it. And you kind of just never believed it. Which is what the enemy always tried to make sure that he put in your mind. Hey, don't believe you got that gift. Don't believe it. Because he don't want you making things happen. Another time, I was with my brother. And this is the last one, y'all. I was with my brother. And we was going through some old... Well, I was with my mama at first. My mama, yeah. And we was going through some old photos. And we, and we found a photo that I took in the fourth grade. And I'm standing on the side of this little girl. And we the same age. And my mom was like, hey, I remember this little girl. What happened to that little girl? And I said, man, I don't know. Man, I ain't seen that girl since that time. I don't know. My mom was like, I wonder what she doing now. And I say, hell if I know. And and it's like I remember that little girl. But I never really would say nothing to her. I just remember her like, I, I just remember the teacher will always make us sit on the side of each other. No matter what. She always made us sit on the side of each other. And sometimes I will forget to bring paper. And I would ask her, you got a sheet of paper I can borrow? And she'll give me a sheet of paper. I stayed with pencils, though, because I was always drawing. And sometimes she might need a pen or a pencil. And she knew I always had pencils. And she'll be like, you got a pen or a pencil I can borrow? And I'll give her a pen or let her borrow a pen or a pencil. And I ain't seen her since. And when I would always draw, I just remember her like doing like this, like, like, like. I wonder what he drawing. What is that? Like, like I was looking at what I'm drawing. And all the kids was always looking at me draw because they just thought the way I would draw was so cool. Ain't seen no sense. That's fourth grade at 10 years old. Years go by. Nah, I'm grown. I find a photo book and I'm with my brother at this time. And we... Looking at the picture, my brother was like, hey, man, whatever happened to that little girl? I said, I, I, I don't know. My mama just asked me what happened to that. I said, I don't know. And my brother kept saying this, right? I don't know what made him say this, but he kept saying over and over, man, you know what? Man, you're going you gonna to run into that girl, man. You're going to run into that girl. Man, you're going to run into that girl. You're going to run into that girl. You gonna, I'm telling you, man, you're going to run into that girl, man. I'm telling you, man. He just kept saying it. For, for three days, he kept saying it. And on the third day, he was like, man, you're going you to run into that girl today. You're going to run into that girl today. Now, for three days, because my brother was saying that, it made me think about it like, I'm going to run into it. What if I, what if I, because she was like a cool friend. I'm like, what if I, what if I, man, man. And then I was speaking. My brother was speaking. I was speaking. My brother was speaking. Now, I'm not knowing I got this gift. And on the third day, it just so happened that we go to the mall. And it's me, my brother, my little sister, my pops, and my mama. We go to the mall. We we go to the food court section. Me and my brother. And my brother walk up to the uh, counter. And I'm standing behind my brother. And behind the counter is the little girl from the picture. Kid you not. Now, my brother, he don't even know this. But I look and I say, man, I know, damn. I say, man, nah, nah, nah. Nope. Nope. I ain't believing it. I ain't believing it. And my brother take his order. He leave. 
I go up to the counter. Yeah, let me get blah, blah, blah. Let me get a number two with a large ring. She like, that'll be it. I'm like, that's it. Leave. We go sit down at the table. I told my brother, I say, the chick who took our order, look at her again. He look, he like, hey. I say, look again. Now he like, wait a minute, wait a minute, little bro. I know damn well. I said, look at the name tag. And he was like, man, we just said, we just said, we just said that. We just said, man, my, bro my brother tripped out because he was like, dog, we just said, we going to meet this girl today. We going to see this girl today. We just said, I'm going to be honest with you. I think my brother got this gift too because everything I've ever watched my brother spoke, it happened. And it happened fast. Everything. My brother probably don't even know he got this gift. But hey, I mean, we're in the bloodline. We in the same bloodline. We both probably got it. My daddy probably got it. Things, things, my, things my dad have said, I've seen it happen. Quick. It's just that how the prophet broke it down, he was kind of like, but your power is, is far more greater. He was like, dog, you the light of your family on both sides. Your power is far greater. He said, but you got to tap into that. That come with a lot of fasting and praying. But I ain't say nothing to the girl. But my mama come running, running out of nowhere. Hey, there go that girl. There go that girl. And I'm like, man, don't, 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 don't go and messing with that chick, man. My mama went up there. Hey, hey, you remember my son? We were just talking about you. You remember my son? I'm like, ah, oh, man, this, this, this chick going to be like, man, they crazy. I don't know what. But she looked at me. She like, I don't remember him. I don't remember him. She like, yeah, y'all went to school together. Y'all used to sit by each other every day in fourth grade. And the girl like, fourth grade? Like, like I'm like, come on, man. Don't nobody remember all that. But I went pulling my mom away like, man, hey, excuse my mama, man. She, you know. That was a good drink she had. You know, she had a real good drink before she, before she got here. But uh, the cat's back. Sorry, y'all. I got distracted. The cat came back. But yeah, man. And, and I got more stories, too, with this gift of manifestation. So I'm going to just end it with saying that this gift that I got, man, I'm for, for, for 2020, I'm going to really try to tap into it hard. The prophet was like, you know, you got you got to work on it, man. You got to really work on it. That's why some things manifested and some things didn't. That's why some things materialized and some things didn't. You know, that's why some negative have happened more than a positive because you really got to master it. When God give you a spiritual specific gift, he wants you to master it, man. And you got to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try my best, y'all. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 gonna try to manifest a better life for this year. And I hope I see results for this year. I didn't mean to be so long, but man, hey. Real talk and real topics. Ain't gonna be no 15 minute video. If you stay all the way through, that's cool. If you feel like man, this video too long, I ain't finna watch all this, that's cool too. I don't care. Peace. I'm out.